We all recently saw on the videos about vibe coding and that's the new trend or the new kit on the block. And for the ones who didn't see the vibe coding videos, it's basically that you accept everything that Cursor or Windsurf is proposing you. So you just write your prompt, you say what you want, you test it out in the UI or wherever and you just accept everything. You don't look at the code, you don't review it, you just accept it. And I thought it's a very interesting idea of just accepting it instead of like reviewing code because who likes reviewing code? I mean, we all love writing the code, but no one likes to review the code. And now cursor removes the writing and we just review doesn't make a lot of sense. So we just accept it, right? I was trying vibe coding for a week. And for everyone who doesn't know me, I'm Aurin. I'm a stuff engineer and tech lead. So I'm writing code for a living, but mostly backend code. I also love road biking. I use Adidas app. I use Komoot. I use the Apple app and everything is like quite nice in its own, but not They, they don't offer the feature that I need. And the feature is that I want to race against myself. You may know the Mario Kart ghost racing where you see Mario uh, in front of you or behind you uh, and you know, is it up front or behind? And I want to have the same for biking. I want to see a little tracking. I want to see, am I faster on the same track or slower than last time? I, I usually ride the same track and I don't know if I'm in front or behind my last ride. So I want to have this as an app. Komoot does offer that with like tracks or segments or something, uh, but it's a paid feature and I don't want to pay Komoot just for this one feature. But I want to have it. So I was trying to vibe code it, right? Yeah, not so right. <laughs> it, it didn't felt like it didn't work. I have quite some experience iOS coding in the past. So I was starting with vibe coding and then just wrote the code uh, that didn't work with vibe coding. and. Yeah, I want to give you a little brief overview of my journey of the app and uh, the result and what vibe coding can do and what it cannot do for you. So my success was that I created a pretty nice UI without even knowing a lot about Swift UI because in the past I used Storybooks and not Swift UI. But Swift UI is way superior from the feeling of writing the code. It feels like React with the state and it's just amazing. And With vibe coding, I was able to get quite far, but mostly I had to review the code in the end myself. So I did not vibe code, but I just AI coded with cursor, right? So let's take a look at the result, what we have and what we can do and what we cannot do. Okay, here you can see the app. Uh, it's Speedometer, not a nice name so far, but stay with me. The app works as it's expected. So what I want to have, I have in here. So I can create a new track and um, this is in the end, just around. So when I drive to the gym, for example, I have a track and inside the track, I have many runs. So I can have multiple runs and inside one track, I have many runs. So you see already the first bug, it says new run, new track, but it should be new run. Uh, I can rename it, I can delete it. So that, that all works. And 50% of that was wipe coding or 60% at least. But where it failed a lot was on the Uh, state management. The state management was super bad. It sometimes had the state in the code here as at state. Oh, well, let me show you here. Sometimes it was state, sometimes state object, sometimes it was in this observed object. So in the view model, so it was all over the place. And I had to remove quite a lot because there was also a lot of redundancy in the state. So it didn't found the state in the track view. So it just created the state object here, even so it was in the track view model. And this back and forth was like quite bad. So I had to manually remove a lot of code and I had to go through the code quite often and it's still really garbage code, but it works. And that's, that's also the thing about vibe coding that it just works, right? So you don't care too much about the code quality, uh, but you care about that it works. And that's something that I also don't like a lot uh, because the code quality will like bring you a lot of trouble later on. And I saw it after I had all of the first iteration done and I wanted to change a few features. It like bite me instantly in the foot and I go back to normal engineering and uh, what it does really, really good is like really small features. So for example, I had in the run here, this button to finish. So I just had a click to finish button and I wanted to have this slide to finish. And it was a one shot. I just said, I want to have a slide to finish button instead of this click to finish button. I pointed it to the directory one shot and I had an amazing button. The only thing that I changed was that 
this arrow here is moving with the button because it was staying with here instead of moving with the button and that it changes the color when it is in the state of when you lose, when you let go, it will finish the track. So this was the only thing that I changed and the rest, it completely got it on its own. So these things are pretty amazing. Also, I just added a new feature. I want to have uh, the sorting here sorted by latest or sorted by last used. So here now you see the gym is on top. If I use this track now and let it go, finish it. And now I use last used is on top, last added it's on the bottom. This is something that is pretty amazing that you can add little features with a few prompts. Um, and as you can see here, I had to point it directly to it. In the first few tries, it was just like, ah, I don't know what you want. Let me create this uh, model, da, da, da. I was like, no, that's not what I want. And I needed to directly point it to the point of code where I want to have the sorting. And then it was adding it in like minutes and it was pretty, pretty decent. And also I want to show you some thing of the state that was broken. So for example, I want to have in the content view, the currently selected track. And this is already part of the view model, but it was just adding it as a new state. And then it broke all the time when I clicked on it because the state was not updated, but the view was already showing and then it could not show the selected track because this was not a state variable so it didn't re-render and like this was pretty broken and it was already part of the view model so i cause i could just add the view model into the track history as a dependency as an observed object point to the right uh, track that was selected and just set this one and it worked right so these little things that cursor does not cor get correct is the things that I see as a big problem in Vibe coding. Using AI for coding is pretty nice and it's like an amazing tool to have. It enhances your speed like a lot, but you need to be careful and you need to read the code. So you need to know how to code and like everyone who's telling you that non-engineers can create products, yes, they can, but the products will break. As you can see recently on Twitter, that's also breaking a lot. So the code works more or less, but it breaks also quite often. And that's why I would be pretty careful with like just accepting the code. In my experience, you need to know how to code, you need to review the code, you need to read it, and you have to give it really good prompts as well as really good rules. Then it is pretty good. I'm a big fan of Cursor. I'm a big fan of using AI for your coding but I would be very careful with using Vibe coding in your day-to-day -day work. And I would be very careful to just accept what cursor throws in front of you. Read through it, review the code. So there's a reason why we have this reviewing, this peer reviewing. And if you don't review your code yourself because you didn't even write it, then at least have someone else reviewing it. I mean, there's a reason why in engineering we have this review some from someone else. So you have to review it yourself because you write it and then you let someone else review as well. And now we get the step back and say, no one reviews at all. Makes no sense for me. Uh, that's why I would say, review your code yourself, let someone else review as well and don't just accept what cursor throws in front of you. Okay, let me show you the working app. So I can see my current speed, I can see the total time, I can see the total distance the last kilometer, the last kilometer time, and the average speed. So these are the values that I care about when I bike against myself. And then I have a little graph on the bottom that shows me how good I am compared to the best track that I have ever run on the same distance, uh, on the same track. So if I finish that, I have the new track. And if I new, create a new run, you can see there's the run that I previously did, previously did and I can see if I am behind it or if I am in front of it and here I can see I'm one second behind, here you can see the red dot. So I know where can I speed up, where did I usually be, where am I compared to my uh, last fastest run. And that I found quite interesting to see how am I doing against myself. Uh, because yeah, I like to improve myself over the same track and don't want to see it afterwards when I'm finished, but I want to see it live. How am I doing compared to my best run on the same track? That's my experience with Vibe coding. That's my experience writing my app on 
uh, cursor and also myself a bit. So it was more of like a 50-50 uh, using cursor a bit, using my own coding a bit. So it was um, a joint venture, so to say. And if you are interested in the app, let me know down in the comments if I should release it or not and what is a fair price. Because I don't have an Apple account at the moment. I need to create one, cost around 100 euros a year. So let me know what you think is a reasonable fair price for the app and also if you want to buy it. Because if I have enough interested people, I would happily go through the process of releasing it. If no one cares about the app, also fine, because then I just use it for my own. And also let me know what you think about Vibe Coding, what is your experience using Cursor. And yeah, happy to, to hear all of your comments, happy to answer them. I wish you a great rest of the week. I wish you a great weekend. Happy coding, happy vibing, whatever you prefer. Uh, I think it's a nice tool to have, but I would say don't rely purely on, on vibing, but just review your code and be cautious on that. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of the day. See you soon.